embark on a journey back to the ancient world, to a time when empires rose and fell, shaping the course of history with their conquests, innovations, and legacies. Uncover the story of a civilization that emerged from the rugged terrains of Anatolia to become a formidable force in the Near East. From the rise of its capital, Patusa, through the era of conquests and diplomacy, to the zenith of its legal and societal advancements, technological innovations, and profound religious and spiritual life. Witness the challenges and decline of an empire that, despite its eventual disappearance, left behind a legacy that continues to fascinate and inspire scholars and history enthusiasts alike. This is the story of the Hittite Empire. In the shadowed realm of ancient history, where myths intertwine with the threads of reality, lies the captivating tale of Hattusa's rise, a city destined to become the heart of the Hittite Empire. Spanning from around 1600 BC to 1178 BC, this story unfolds in the enigmatic lands of Anatolia, where, amid rugged landscapes, the Hittites carved out a kingdom that would challenge the very pillars of the ancient world. Once a modest settlement, Hattusa's destiny was forever altered by the vision and ambition of its rulers. It was Labarna I, ruling around the early 16th century BC, who first expanded the city's borders, laying the groundwork for an empire that would extend its reach across the Middle East. But the true metamorphosis of Hattusa began under the reign of Hattusili I, around 1650-1620 BC, whose name, meaning one from Hattusa, symbolized the city's burgeoning identity and power. He fortified its walls, transforming it into a citadel that stood as a bulwark against the empire's enemies and a beacon of Hittite strength. The Golden Age of Hattusa dawned under Suppiluliam I, who ruled from approximately 1344 to 1322 BC, a ruler of legendary prowess, who wielded diplomacy and war with equal finesse. He led his warriors to victories that expanded the Hittite domain to its zenith, securing Hattusa's place in history as the capital of a sprawling empire that rivaled even Egypt. Under his reign, the city became a crucible of innovation, where laws were codified, and treaties were forged, most notably the Treaty of Kadesh with Egypt, shaping the diplomatic landscape of the ancient Near East. Yet, what truly set Hattusa apart was its spiritual significance. Nestled within its mighty walls were grand temples dedicated to a pantheon of deities, from the storm god Tezhub to the sun goddess Arena. These sacred spaces were not just centers of worship but also repositories of power, where kings became gods, and myths walked among mortals. The city's priests wielded influence that echoed through the halls of the royal palace, guiding the fate of the empire with omens and prophecies. The tale of Atusa is not merely one of conquest and kings, it is a saga woven from the dreams and aspirations of a people who sought to etch their name across the heavens. From its humble beginnings to its rise as the epicenter of an empire, Atusa's legacy is a testament to the enduring spirit of civilization, a reminder that from the dust of forgotten ages, the stories of the past continue to illuminate the path of the future. The Hittite Empire, with Atusa at its heart, remains a profound example of ancient achievement, showcasing the complexity and dynamism of human societies long vanished. Let me think of a joke. A why don't Hittite rulers play hide and seek? Because good luck hiding when your city walls are the size of mountains. <laughs> Nestled in the rugged terrains of Anatolia, the story of Atusa's rise from obscurity to the zenith of its power unfolds as a captivating tale of ambition, strategic prowess, and diplomatic ingenuity. Once a mere modest settlement, Hattusa was destined to become the pulsing heart of the Hittite Empire, flourishing under the ambitious visions of its rulers and playing a pivotal role in the grand theater of ancient diplomacy and warfare. The epic saga of the Hittite expansion begins around the 17th century BC, with the Hittite monarchs setting their sights on extending the empire's borders across the vast expanse of the Near East. Through swift and decisive military campaigns, the Hittites showcased their formidable might, subjugating regions rich in resources and of great strategic importance. However, the ascent of Hattusa to a position among the ancient world's great powers was not achieved by military might alone. In the realm of international relations, where the clash of swords often drowned out the nuances of negotiation, the Hittites excelled in the art of diplomacy with unmatched skill. Their diplomatic magnum opus was the Treaty of Kadesh with Egypt, negotiated in the aftermath of the Battle of Kadesh around 1274 BC. 
this treaty stands as one of the earliest recorded peace agreements in human history, effectively ending hostilities and establishing a boundary between the Hittite Empire and the Egyptian Empire under Pharaoh Ramses II. It underscored Atusa's diplomatic acumen, showcasing its ability to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the era's most powerful states in negotiation and peacemaking. Strategically positioned, Hattusa became a crucial juncture for trade routes, facilitating not only the exchange of goods but also the rich intermingling of ideas and cultural practices with neighboring and distant lands. This cosmopolitan aspect of Hattusa significantly contributed to the Hittite culture, rendering it a vibrant melting pot of the ancient world. Through their conquests and diplomatic engagements, the Hittites and their illustrious capital, Hattusa, etched an indelible mark on the ancient Near East's historical tapestry. The legacy they left behind, immortalized in the ruins of Hattusa and the ancient texts that narrate their saga, continues to captivate and inspire. It serves as a testament to the enduring power of human ambition, the intricacies of ancient statecraft, and the timeless quest for harmony between civilizations. Why did the Hittite ruler build a palace on a hill? Because he wanted to be on top of the world, quite literally. <laughs> Amidst the spiritual richness of the Hittite Empire, a particular creation myth stands out, encapsulating the Hittites' cosmological views and their deep-seated reverence for the divine. This myth, blending elements from the various cultures within their realm, narrates the universe's birth from primordial chaos. It speaks of a cosmic order established by the gods, with the storm god Tarhunt playing a pivotal role in vanquishing the forces of disorder, symbolized by the serpent Ilyanka. This victory not only signifies the triumph of order over chaos but also sets the stage for the world's creation, where the gods then allocate roles among themselves to oversee the natural world, humanity, and the cycles of life and death. Central to this narrative is the idea that the world is a product of divine will and struggle, a theme common in the mythologies of the ancient Near East. The Hittites' version of the creation myth reflects their theological syncretism, absorbing, adapting, and reinterpreting the myths of the peoples they came into contact with, such as the Hurrians and Mesopotamians. This syncretism is evident in their pantheon, where deities from different cultures are venerated side by side, each playing a role in the universe's ongoing function and maintenance. The creation myth, like other Hittite religious narratives, was preserved in the cuneiform tablets found in Atusa, serving not just as religious text but also as a testament to the Hittites' worldview. It reinforced the king's role as the earthly representative of the divine order, legitimizing his rule as part of a cosmic mandate. Furthermore, it underscored the importance of rituals and ceremonies in maintaining the balance between the divine and mortal worlds, ensuring the empire's prosperity and stability. This cosmological tale, woven into the fabric of Hittite spirituality, highlights a civilization deeply engaged with the divine, where gods and mortals coexist in a carefully maintained balance. The remnants of Hattusa, with its grand temples and ritual sites, stand as silent witnesses to these ancient beliefs, inviting us to ponder the profound spiritual legacy of the Hittite Empire, where creation myths and divine treaties shape the contours of both heaven and earth. Why did the Hittite diplomat become a comedian? Because they realized that laughter was the best way to lighten up tense diplomatic situations. <laughs> the Hittite Empire, with its capital at Atusa, stood as a beacon of legal innovation and societal organization in the ancient world. Its comprehensive legal system and the societal norms it fostered provide a fascinating glimpse into the lives of its people and the mechanisms that held this vast empire together. Central to Hittite society was a set of laws that were remarkably advanced for their time, reflecting a deep understanding of justice, fairness, and the complexities of human behavior. The Hittite laws covered a wide range of issues, from criminal acts and property disputes to marriage and familial obligations. Unlike the harsher codes of contemporary societies, Hittite laws were characterized by their focus on restitution and reconciliation rather than punitive measures. For instance, theft could be compensated for by repayment of the stolen goods plus a fine, embodying a pragmatic approach to law enforcement that sought to restore harmony rather than inflict suffering. The societal structure of the Hittites was equally intriguing, with a clear hierarchy yet notable for its fluidity and opportunities for social mobility. At the apex were the king and his family, followed by priests, 
nobles, and the free citizens, each with their roles and responsibilities that contributed to the empire's stability. Notably, the Hittites recognized the importance of skilled artisans, farmers, and soldiers, whose contributions were vital to the empire's prosperity and security. Women in Hittite society held a relatively high status, with queens playing significant roles in religious ceremonies and possibly even in governance. Records suggest that women could own property, manage their affairs, and were protected by laws against abuse or mistreatment, indicating a society that valued the contributions of all its members, regardless of gender. Religion permeated every aspect of Hittite life, with a pantheon of gods overseeing the natural world and human affairs. The Hittites believed in maintaining harmony with the divine, a concept that extended to their diplomatic relations, where treaties were often sealed with oaths to the gods, underscoring the sacredness of these agreements. The laws and society of the Hittite Empire, as unearthed from the cuneiform tablets of Hattusa, paint a picture of a civilization that was not only militarily powerful but also deeply committed to justice, social order, and the welfare of its people. This blend of legal wisdom and societal organization contributed to the Hittites' enduring legacy, offering valuable insights into the governance and daily life of one of the ancient world's most fascinating empires. Why did the Hittite bring a measuring tape to court? Because he wanted to make sure justice was measured to the exact cubit. The Hittite Empire, renowned for its military might and diplomatic acumen, was also a cradle of technological innovation. Nestled in the rugged landscapes of Anatolia, the Hittites harnessed their environment and ingenuity to develop technologies that not only bolstered their empire's strength but also contributed significantly to the advancement of ancient civilization. One of the most notable technological achievements of the Hittites was their mastery of ironworking. They are often credited with being among the first to forge iron into weapons and tools, marking a significant transition from the Bronze Age to the Iron Age. This technological leap gave the Hittites a formidable advantage in warfare, as iron weapons were more durable and effective than their bronze counterparts. The knowledge of iron smelting and forging spread from the Hittite heartland, revolutionizing warfare and toolmaking across the ancient world. In addition to their metallurgical advancements, the Hittites were adept at engineering and construction. Their capital, Hattusa, showcased this expertise with its impressive defensive walls, grandiose gates adorned with sculpted reliefs, and advanced water management systems. The Hittites constructed elaborate networks of tunnels and dams to secure their city's water supplies and protect against sieges, demonstrating a sophisticated understanding of hydraulic engineering. The Hittites' chariots were another testament to their technological prowess. Lighter and more maneuverable than those of their rivals, these chariots allowed for swift movements on the battlefield, playing a pivotal role in the Hittites' military strategy. The design and construction of these chariots influenced warfare across the Near East, with many civilizations adopting and adapting Hittite innovations. Agriculture, the backbone of the Hittite economy, also benefited from technological advancements. The Hittites developed new farming tools and techniques, including the use of iron plows, which increased agricultural efficiency and supported the empire's growing population. These agricultural innovations ensured a steady supply of food, contributing to the empire's stability and expansion. The technological advancements of the Hittite empire extended beyond the battlefield and fields into the realm of written communication. The adaptation and use of cuneiform script on clay tablets for administrative, legal, and diplomatic purposes showcase the Hittites' contributions to the development of early writing systems. This not only facilitated the management of their sprawling empire, but also preserved their laws, treaties, and historical records for posterity. Through their innovations in metallurgy, engineering, chariotry, agriculture, and writing, the Hittites left an indelible mark on the ancient world. Their technological legacy, unearthed from the ruins of Hattusa and deciphered from clay tablets, highlights the ingenuity and adaptability of this ancient civilization, underscoring the role of technological advancement in the rise and sustenance of empires. Why did the Hittite blacksmith have the best luck? Because he always forged ahead with confidence. <laughs> The 
Hittite Empire, despite its formidable power and sophisticated society, faced a constellation of challenges that ultimately led to its decline and disappearance from the historical stage around the end of the Bronze Age, circa 1200 BC. This period of decline was not attributable to a single cause, but rather a complex web of internal strife, external pressures, and cataclysmic events that converged to unravel one of the ancient world's most advanced civilizations. One of the internal factors contributing to the Hittite decline was dynastic disputes and succession crises. The royal court of Hattusa was often embroiled in political intrigue and power struggles, weakening the central authority and leading to periods of instability within the empire. This internal discord made it difficult for the Hittites to present a unified front against external threats and manage the vast territories under their control. Economic difficulties also played a role in the empire's decline. The Hittite economy, heavily reliant on agriculture and trade, was vulnerable to the disruptions caused by ongoing conflicts and the overextension of resources to maintain a vast and sprawling empire. Additionally, the depletion of natural resources, including metal supplies crucial for the production of weapons and tools, further strained the empire's economic stability. The Hittite Empire was constantly under pressure from neighboring states and nomadic groups. To the south, the resurgent power of Egypt under the New Kingdom posed a significant military and diplomatic challenge, leading to the famous Battle of Kadesh. Although the battle ended in a stalemate and was followed by a peace treaty, it drained Hittite resources and demonstrated the limits of Hittite military power. Moreover, the Hittites faced threats from the Assyrian Empire to the east and the encroachment of the Sea Peoples, a confederation of naval raiders who attacked coastal cities across the Mediterranean. The invasions by these mysterious groups contributed to the destabilization of the region and put additional military strain on the Hittites. The final centuries of the Hittite Empire were marked by a series of natural disasters and climatic changes that compounded the existing political and economic troubles. Evidence suggests that a prolonged drought affected the region, leading to crop failures, famine, and social unrest. Earthquakes and diseases further weakened the empire, disrupting the social order and diminishing the population. The culmination of these challenges, both internal and external, against the backdrop of environmental stress, led to the gradual fragmentation of the Hittite Empire. The central government's inability to effectively manage these crises resulted in the loss of territories and the eventual abandonment of Hattusa, the capital. The once great empire fractured into smaller, neo-Hittite states, which retained some aspects of Hittite culture but lacked the cohesion and strength of the unified empire. The decline of the Hittite Empire serves as a poignant reminder of the vulnerabilities of even the most powerful states to the unpredictable forces of nature, the dynamics of human society, and the ebb and flow of geopolitical fortunes. As we close the chapter on the remarkable saga of the Hittite Empire, from the majestic rise of Hattusa to the intricate dance of power, innovation, and spirituality that define this ancient civilization, we are reminded of the enduring legacy left behind in the annals of history. The Hittite story, with its highs and lows, continues to captivate and offer invaluable lessons on the complexities of human endeavor and the transient nature of empires. If you've been enthralled by the journey through time to explore the achievements, challenges, and mysteries of the Hittite world, don't forget to like and subscribe. Your support helps us bring more fascinating tales from history to light, unraveling the past to enlighten the present. Join us again as we delve into the stories that have shaped our world.